In this project, we're going to create this part called a saddle bracket. Before we begin our design, we need to consider which sketch will be our base sketch, and we look for an efficiency. Now I can see that the front view shows me the thickness and would determine the shape of the base and the two vertical ends. But if I start with a sketch of the top view, it will define not only the length and width and shape, but also the hole and the vertical ends, so that the top view is going to give me a more efficient sketch to start with, and I can use that to create all of my base features. So when looking at my top view, I can see that the object is five inches long and three inches wide. It has a 1.25 inch hole that's centered in the middle of the part, and that the material thickness is going to be half an inch or 0.5 inches. So I've started a new part studio and made sure that my document is set to inches. I'm going to start a sketch and choose the top sketch plane. Right click and view normal to the sketch plane. Now in making my top view, I know that it's a rectangle so I'm going to choose rectangle from my uh, sketch tools and I'm going to use a center point rectangle because I know that the hole is going to be in the center of this rectangle and I want to be able to use that reference. Now I can dimension this right away. I know that it, it's 5 so I just enter that from the keyboard and when I enter it allows me to enter the width and I can determine the size right now. Now I'm going to escape center rectangle and I want to create a relationship on the sketch plane, so I'm going to use a coincident to constrain the center point of my rectangle to the origin of my sketch plane. And with that applied, you can see that the lines turn black and that rectangle is fully constrained. Next, I'll add the circle. I will use a center point circle and click on the origin and I can set the diameter of the circle at 1.25 from the keyboard and that's also fully constrained. Now add the lines that show the uh, thickness of the vertical ends. I'll use the line command and when I want to add a single line segment I'm going to hold the mouse button down. So I hold the left mouse button down as I draw this, this is vertical and a coincident to the bottom line and now let up on the mouse button and it puts a single line without being continuously hooked together and I can go to the other end, click hold the mouse button down and when I see the other line light up and it's vertical I can let go. Now I'll dimension these with this distance between these two lines as being 0.5 and the same on the other end determining this distance at 0.5. And with that I can see that my object is fully defined, my sketch is, it's turned black. I'll use the check mark to end the sketch and change to an isometric view. I'll choose an extrude feature and in this case I'm going to be making a new part. I'm going to choose the regions of my sketch. I'm going to choose these three but not the whole not the center, so that will create a hole. With those chosen, I can see that I will be extruding in the vertical direction and the thickness I'll set to 0.5, hit enter, and I can visibly see what that's going to look like. And click the checkbox, the green checkbox, to accept it. Now I need the vertical ends that are 2.5 inches tall but uh, they were part of this original sketch, but I can't see the sketch to use it. So I'm going to go back in the feature list to sketch one. I'm going to turn visibility on by clicking on the little eyeball there. And now I can see the sketch elements down here. I'll start another extrude. In this case, I want to add these uh, features to my existing part. I'm going to choose these regions of my sketch and I can see that it's uh, going to extrude in a vertical direction 
I know that these are 2.5 inches tall and I'll hit enter to accept that I can see what my results going to be uh, I can see that it's going to merge with part one so they'll all be part of the same feature and I'll accept that the last feature I have to add are those semicircular cutouts on each end of the part I can see that they're centered along the top edge and have a radius of one inch I'll start a new sketch and for my sketch plane I'm going to use this end of my part with that sketch plane determined I'm going to right click choose normal to the sketch plane and in this particular case I want to use a center point circle and it needs to be centered on this top edge now notice that I have a center point on this line that will light up so I can click that to use the center point and now click the line and put in that it is a one inch radius so this is asking for a diameter so I will put in a two inch diameter and notice that it is immediately uh, fully defined it turns black because it is uh, coincident to the center point on that line so I will choose the green check to end the sketch I'll go to isometric and to remove the material I'll use an extrude feature choose the semicircular part of that notice that it's using the line uh, from the existing end in this case I'm looking I want to remove material it automatically changes direction because it knows which direction to go uh, rather than determine a distance I want to make sure it always goes through both ends and it's being it's removing it from part one so I'll accept this and now I've created uh, the part by removing those ends now that the part is finished you can look in the feature list on the left and you can see the efficiency of using the top view as our base sketch we were able to determine all of the relationships in just two sketches to create this part.